Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Biosphere Reserve. My name is Miguel Klusner-Gort. I'm the director of the Division of Ecological and Earth Sciences and also the secretary of uh, the Man and the Biosphere program. So the Man and the Biosphere program started in 1971, uh, so 50 years ago as a research program, but also as a program of integrating nature conservation and integrating sustainable development for human beings. The backbone, of course, of the program are the biosphere reserve. And you will see uh, on the slides what I'm talking about. I will show you two slides. The first one is um, some figures. Uh, I will start also showing you on the right side up of the slide what is the bias reserve, the core area, a surrounding buffer zone and surrounding transition area. And uh, our total figure now is 714 biosphere reserves in 129 countries, uh, including 21 transboundary biosphere reserves and two transcontinental biosphere reserves. So as you can see, they are spread all over the world. And of course, it's quite important to understand this program is not another program just for natural parks and nature conservation. We have a total now of more than 200 million people in these biosphere reserves. So it's really a program for the people or people are part of nature and they are not opposed to nature. So they are incorporated uh, in the nature protection, but also in the sustainable use of natural resources. Speaking about the size of biosphere reserves worldwide, imagine we will we push them all together. Uh, this will give us around 5% of the world's total surface. So altogether is roughly some 7 million square, uh, 7 million square kilometers. Uh, this would give us around the size of Australia. You may have heard that the Conventional Biological Diversity, CBD, recently declared the, de the decade for biodiversity conservation, 2020-2030, and suggested 30% um, of the terrestrial area protected, 10% strictly protected. So this is a target. I think it's a very good target. And we are all called to participate in that. However, I must say that the program is, of course, uh, participating in this for quite a long time now. And that we have, as I already mentioned, 5% of the terrestrial size of the world protected and 1.5% strictly protected as a national park. So we are still far away from that target, and uh, I think it's quite important. When you see also on the right downside of the slide, uh, the distribution of this surface in different zones. Uh, so you see a big elevation area, a slightly smaller buffer zone, even smaller uh, core area. These are, of course, the new tendencies in the program, let's say, for the last 15 years, more or less, before always the core area was more dominating. Concerning also some curious facts, I would come to the second slide. And to give you an overview, for example, where are these areas distributed? For example, you see that the regional distribution of bias reserved is mostly in the Europe and North American area. However, when you see uh, the total size of the biosphere reserves, uh, the area that covers most is, of course, Latin America. You see on the, pile on the right side. Um, just to give you some curious facts also, because we, are, we were often asked, um, what is the minimum size? What is the maximum size? Does this exist? Uh, so first of all, I would say these bias reserves are represented in all ecosystems of the world. 
they are covering all parts, whether high mountains, savannas, islands, coast zones, peri-urban areas. Um, so they are all present. And when you see, for example, point number one, uh, the biggest size, this is uh, in Brazil, more than 1.7 square kilometers. This is, of course, the Mata Atlantica biosphere reserves that goes over 3,500 kilometers. But some other curious figures, Costa Rica, more than 50% of the national territory is a biosphere reserve. So a truly uh, development plan for the country. Now we are coming to Spain. Spain has the biggest number of biosphere reserves, 52. They are, of course, not so big, but they are spread all over the place uh, as really models, useful models for uh, nature conservation and sustainable development. But also some of the emblematic figures on board. For example, the Mount Everest in China is in the Komo Langmar Biosphere Reserve. Or, and now I'm coming more to the part of protection. Uh, the in, uh, entire population of the highly endangered Sumatra orang utan, and we are just talking about more than 6,000 individuals, which is not very big, are living all together in the Gunung Loisa Biosphere Reserve, Indonesia. What does it mean? It means that if we don't have one day this biosphere reserve, we can be sure we will not have these uh, big ape species. And I think there we are touching already at the border of feasibility and the border of real need. But also who are managing these biosphere reserves? Uh, we hear a lot that this is national governments. Um, in Spain, for example, autonomous communities or mayors. Uh, but the Tsatsui biosphere reserve in Canada is the first biosphere reserve in the world managed by what they call First Nation, indigenous population. Uh, it's entirely managed by an indigenous group. Uh, and the last curious figure I just wanted to show you to give you an overview on the program is, of course, the Huritz cluster is reserved in South Africa, where it's the only place in the world where we have three recognized biodiversity hotspots coming together. So again, something that is for nature protection very important, but also existing in a highly populated area because the Huritz cluster bias reserve is really where a lot of people are living and where we again feel that we are really touching um, exactly the border between uh, the people living in the area and the conservation of what could be done. As you heard from the first slide that I showed you, we have right now 129 countries on board. So globally speaking, there's still some 70 countries missing. I would hope that we get them soon on board with a biosphere reserve proposal, at least one, so that we can really say we have the entire world community on board. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much for interesting in UNESCO's Man of the Bias for program and looking forward to all your contributions in the future for this interesting program. Thank you very much.